To prevent any further reductions in their income per ton, the producing countries, mainly in the Middle East, won agreement in the 1950s that profit sharing should no longer be based on actual prices, but instead on a set price or posted price, which should remain stable. However, the oil companies reduced that price in 1959 and again in 1960. In order to defend their marketing margins, the producing country's response in September 1960 was to form the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, more commonly known as OPEC. OPEC was initially founded by five countries. Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, Iraq, Iran, and Venezuela. Eight others, Qatar, Indonesia, Libya, the United Arab Emirates, Algeria, Nigeria, Ecuador, and Gabon, subsequently joined, bringing the total membership to 13. Ecuador left OPEC at the end of 1992. Gabon in 1996. Posted prices of crude oil remained stable from 1960 to 1970, around $1.8 per barrel for Arabian light, but real prices continued to fall, reaching a level of around $1.2 to $1.4 per barrel. This favorable position for consumers was reversed during the 1960s. The strong growth in oil demand resulted in a sharp fall in the ratio of known reserves to production, from over 100 in the 1950s to 30 towards the 1970s. The perception grew in Western countries that without any further discoveries, supplies might become insufficient. The well-known report, The Limits to Growth, by the Club of Rome, reflected the spirit of that time, hostile to the consumer society and the wasteful consumption of raw materials. One particular event caused grave concern in oil circles, the Six-Day War. In June 1967, the Six-Day War led to the close of the Suez Canal. A major portion of oil shipments from the Middle East to Europe was suddenly forced to divert via the Cape, putting substantial pressure on freight rates. However, the first signs of the forthcoming oil crisis came from Libya. Libya under Gaddafi increased royalties and challenged the 50-50 profit-sharing agreements. Imposing these new conditions, first of all on the independent producers, then on the major oil companies. Libyan production although limited, was indispensable if the requirement of consuming countries were to be met. The major oil companies accepted the new conditions, which were demanded first by Libya and then by all the OPEC countries. In 1973, when war broke out between the Arab countries and Israel, the Arab countries imposed a total embargo in respect of certain countries that favored Israel and a partial embargo in respect of others. The war also gave OPEC an opportunity to impose a substantial increase in the reference crude prices in October, followed by an even larger increase in December. Posted prices for Arabian light reached about $5 per barrel in September and almost $11 per barrel in December. Although the first steps had been taken by Russia as early as the 1920s, by Mexico in 1938, and by Iran in 1951, the principal series of moves to nationalize oil company interests was over the period 1971 to 1988. It included partial nationalization of French interests in Algeria in 1971, total nationalization of British Petroleum's Libyan interests in 1971, of Iraq Petroleum in 1972, Exxon and Shell in Libya in 1973, total nationalization in Kuwait and in Qatar in 1975, in Venezuela in 1976, and in Saudi Arabia between 1974 and 1980. In the few remaining concessions, taxes were heavily increased, royalties raised from 12 to 20 percent, and the profit-sharing agreement changed from 50-50 to 85-15 in favor of the producing countries. Between 1974 and 1978, crude oil prices remained almost stable. But in 1979 with the Iranian Revolution, there was panic in consuming countries, particularly in Western Europe and North America. Prices on the free markets increased drastically. The OPEC countries then imposed a further massive increase in the crude price, up to some $35 per barrel in 1981. And that was the second oil shock. The following figure summarizes recent developments in the price of crude oil after the first oil shock.
it was OPEC that decided the volumes of oil produced and its price. The producing countries had become aware of their political power and until 1985 were remarkably successful in controlling production in line with their objective of defending price levels and their income 